Okay, so here we are. We've gotten quite a bit of stuff removed. <clears throat> we just kind of started from the outside working in. We got the, the grill real simple. Just like four little screws on top and it just kind of pops out of there. We got the bumper uh, four bolts that were holding that. I don't know if there was supposed to be another set on the other side, but this one only had four. Two on each side and uh, then we just started working our way in. We got the plastic grill out of there. Wasn't really a big deal. Um, you can kind of see where it's bolted on these locations. Um, so then we got that out and there's a brace that runs from here to here. It's got a couple bolts here and then a couple bolts coming through from the back side. So four bolts on each side holding that brace and it's a little bit tricky to pry up out of there but uh, once that comes out then we can just basically go ahead and lift the uh, intercooler out. You know if your radiator's in it go ahead and get your radiator out. Um, the condenser said didn't have a Freon in mine anyways and it was all banged up so it was coming out of there. Not saying that you couldn't get it without, you know, you could leave the condenser. You'd probably have room to get it up and out of there still. And you could wiggle that thing around, but mine was messed up. And really, there's no point in, uh, you know, leaving more stuff in your way if you don't have to. So, um, yeah, like I said, we just, I've been working my way, you know, from the outside in. And we've gotten this far. So I'm pretty happy. I really I hadn't done one of these trucks before and didn't know that they put the brace on these um, these Super Duty trucks, but that's actually handy. And it makes things a lot easier. So now we can get in there and uh, said I'm just getting ready to take the fan out here at this point, and it's just going to be way easier. Um, I knew I was going to have to remove this stuff to get this engine out of here. I just couldn't see it happening without removing a lot of this stuff is going to be so tight. Not saying that it couldn't be done, but it's going to be really tight. So I just decided to go ahead and focus my attention on uh, getting everything off the front of the truck. Like I said, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Nothing really difficult to getting this stuff off of here. It's just kind of time consuming. So, um, yeah, it's going to make it, um, way easier you know i've got the transmission cooler got the uh, power steering cooler just laid over there because it was fine just laid it carefully out of the way so it's not getting damaged but everything else is out of the way now it's going to make it so much easier for me to start working my way in here to get this out now and i said i'm just getting ready to work on this fan you can see there's two bolts already removed there and then you come down here and we've got a couple more so there's one 15 millimeter and then there's one over here on this side so i'm just getting ready to take those out and uh, seeing other people using a a uh, crescent wrench to get this loose and i'm gonna i think i'm gonna try that i may rig something up to go around those bolts without having to rent something i may have to rent something i don't know but I'm going to try to see if I can get it loose without having to go get a special tool. So uh, that's what I'm going to be working on here now. Okay, so as I went to remove the fan clutch there, it turned out I didn't have a crescent wrench big enough to even fit on the thing. So luckily I've got an auto zone close by and seeing how I was going to get a wrench have to get a wrench, I decided to just go get a Lona tool and do it right. And uh, what I figured out here is that I'm going to be using this um, it's a 68 millimeter, and this is going to go on the bolts on the front of that uh, water pump cover. And then we're going to use this uh, 47 millimeter. It is a real heavy duty wrench, too. And um, I'm actually going to stick my breaker bar on the end of this too, just to give myself some more leverage. And I'm going to hold it with that. Shouldn't take a lot to get this loose, but 
I'm gonna get it set up here, but like I said, this is just a master fan clutch set. And it's just one of their loaner tools and you know it comes in pretty handy to to get a special tool sometimes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it set up on here and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I want to show you how I had this position. I had the I used my breaker bar to position on the piece that slid up over the nuts on the front of the water pump. And then I just I used my ratchet and I got a hold of the other part while this was being just held right here because all it needs to do is just hold it a little bit to keep it still. And uh, I actually used my cheater bar on there too to help break it loose. So, you know, the, the most difficult part is just getting that piece positioned on there and getting it to stay still while you get on it with that. But it wasn't too bad. Once I got it positioned on there, it took me, took me two seconds to get it loose. So, um, seen people use them slots to hold it still too and now heck that may be the easiest way to do it because that would work too and I can't see it hurting a thing in the world if you just prop something in there like I've got here just to hold that thing still while you get up there and, and uh, get a ranch a hold of it so anyways we got that loose and uh, this kit here helped out a lot so we're going to go ahead and get this fan off of here now Okay, and with that piece off, we can finally remove this shroud here and get this out of the way. So, um, looks like it's attached to the hose there, but uh, it's going to be a lot easier getting in here now. Okay, I just wanted to show you this little clip that's holding this hose so you don't break this. It's just, basically it kind of slides. It has a hook right there that pushes in and locks. So you have to push, you have to go in there and push that down. In other words, you have to push that right there down as good as you can. Okay, so you push that little tab down and then allow you to pull it back out. I mean, it really grips in there and finally pushed it down enough to get it where it could pop out so it, that's what's holding that just so you don't don't break that thing here's a better view of this tool and what it's designed to do it just kind of goes over those bolts and holds it enough to, you can get the big wrench on it and take that uh, off the water pump now here's a good view of this um, tensioner lock you can see how it's just a little piece of metal there that uh, just clips right in behind that after you fully push that by putting your breaker bar in there or your ratchet in there and pushing it clockwise you're able to push that right in behind that and lock that so you don't have to do anything else with it and like I was talking about to uh, release it you can just get a little screwdriver in there behind it and just flip it out right at the top there and it'll put the tensioner right back Okay, the next thing I've done, I've just went ahead and took this power steering pump loose. Got three bolts. They just come into the engine there. And I'm just taking that loose and I'm going to see about <clears throat> maybe trying to get this compressor loose here. Or um, the lines or whatever. I don't know if they're going to get in my way. I'm going to have to definitely do something. I'm either going to have to get the whole compressor or I'm going to have to get the lines themselves. So I'm just going to see what I'm able to do with that. And uh, so I'm just working my way around. I'm going to start getting this harness off of here and getting all this stuff up here. And it's going to be way easier now because I can just I can just get in here and do whatever I need to at this point. Okay, so here's where we're at at this point, and just wanted to show you because of the difficulty of this what I'm doing to remove these exhaust pipes that are running to the exhaust manifolds. Now, I'm not going to be able to show you, you know, where these are. I can show you on this engine, you know, they're right in behind there. We're trying to remove the bolts 
that are coming through here. Now, <clears throat> I suppose you could possibly get underneath and do something, but the problem is you have to hold the bolt head that's on top. You can see how I got this ratchet position. I've got a swivel head on it and I've got it on the 10 millimeter. There's 10 millimeters on this top part of this pipe. And as you come down here, you can see my ratchet right down there. Now that's on a 13 millimeter down there. So, uh, and I'm using a little cheater bar. These are pretty tight, but you have to hold this and then break it loose in that. And that's how I'm going to take these loose, hopefully. Uh, it's working so far on this side, but we have to get these out of here or we're not gonna have room to lift this thing up and off of here with these mounts and stuff. And also, I believe the uh, <clears throat> the oil pan, the way it's shaped, you can see it's got to clear that cross member down there. So we're going to have to get it up quite a bit higher. So that's what I'm working on at this point. I just wanted to kind of touch on that because of the difficulty of this. And I think we're probably going to remove this. I'll show you how we're going to do that. Uh, but that's probably going to be the next thing, getting that out of the way. It it's connects back to the exhaust there in a section, and we can take that loose and get that out of the way. I'm thinking maybe, I don't know, uh, just not 100% sure on that at this point. If I can leave it, I will, but I'm thinking it's going to get in the way when I go to lifting this up. So, uh, and then after this, we'll get started on uh, removing the bolts from the torque converter and getting those. And um, this AC compressor, if you ever had to change this, I really don't know how you would get it out of here. Um, I've got the whole front of this truck off and I managed to get one bolt out of it and I just quit. Um, I guess you can get to them, but it's just real difficult, I don't know. I guess you got to use swivel sockets and get creative because you got this engine cradle that's sitting right underneath this part here and it's blocking you from getting to a lot of this stuff. The power steering was real simple. Uh, real simple getting to that. And um, you know, I was just looking at this here. This is supposed to have four bolts. I only pulled three. I guess somebody worked on that. Or one of the bolts fell out at one time. Because I'd only pulled three out of there. But anyway, the compressor, what I've got planned for it, I'm going to lift the engine up some and then get those out. It's just way too difficult to get in there. And, and it's going to waste too much of my time trying to get at it like this. But like I said, if it had to be changed... Um, I don't know how you change it. it. It would be a nightmare. There would be a lot of stuff under here I can see that you would just absolutely have to remove to even think about getting that out of there. <clears throat> so, anyway, I'm going to follow up when, when I get to work uh, on removing the torque converter. Bolts are nuts back there. There's six of them, I know. I'm going to go ahead and try to get this piping out of here for now. Okay, I'm just removing this section of pipe right here. And I had a lot of difficulty removing these. They were really heat welded on there. But I finally got those loose and I'm just getting ready to move this section and get this out of here. And then I'll move on to this piece and remove it. I just wasn't going to have enough room to get the whole thing out. But I will definitely be putting a lot of anti-seize on these things when I put them back. And uh, a 3 8 six-sided. I'm using six-sided. You don't want to use the 12-sided. These things will round off. But I used a 3 8 six-sided. It was the tightest fit. I thought they were a 10 millimeter, but it was just a little bit too loose. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this section out here. Okay, so I just got this section of pipe out. This bottom bolt here was my most difficult because I had to be under the truck holding the ratchet while I had 
somebody up here pulling the trigger on the pneumatic I just couldn't figure out how to hold it and use my pneumatic but I did use the pneumatic on the ones that were going to the um, exhaust manifold I was able to position it up top to where I could use it on all four of those and the only ones I had to do by hand were these up here and those were the toughest ones to get loose these weren't bad it was just hard to get to and uh because you got a 10 millimeter up top and then you got a 13 on the bottom so you have to hold the one on top while you're removing that one so it just makes it more difficult <clears throat> so i had to actually get an extra set of hands for that so um at this point i'm going to go ahead and just get the the big pipe out of the way back there it uh, connects under the rear um, i can show you what we have to do here it just comes right back here and connects just um right here at the cab and we looks like we've got um i don't know if those are 13s or 15s but we're just going to soak those and uh take that loose and we'll be able to remove that section of pipe so we're not it's not getting in our way so that's going to be my next step right there. Okay, so I just disconnected this, and those were 15 millimeter nuts. And on top of uh, getting this loose, I got back here and I etched a mark. You can see the mark. And I etched that on each and every one of these. So when I put this back, I'll get it lined up exactly the way it was. So. Okay, we're going to see if we can't free up some slack here and maybe somehow get this out of the way now. Okay, so where we're at at this point, we've removed the uh, 14 millimeter nuts from our torque converter flywheel under here. And we've came in through the driver's side here to do that. And I can show you access point is right here there's a rubber plug now we've also took all of the 13 millimeters that are around our uh, bell housing and I've just got them kind of set in there for now I like to label though as label those as to where they came from so they don't get mixed up now I was able to take every one of these out with my pneumatic simply by using a uh, assortment of extensions with a swivel head socket now a word of caution when using a swivel head uh, it can fly off of there and get you but I was able to get every single one of them including the ones that are way up top you can see there and it's way easier even though it may not seem like it to do all these from back here and more especially with the pneumatic didn't have to use a wrench on any of these so that's where we're at uh, right now I'm just gonna get ready and label these and bag them and set them aside said the uh, transmission is completely loose from the engine at this point I took in the starter out previously so um, <clears throat> The next thing we're going to work on, see, you notice I got a stand here, I'm supporting the transmission. Definitely have something under there before you start taking those out. Uh, the next thing I'm going to work on is getting on these uh, engine mounts. And I'm going to be swapping those to my other engine, but what I'm actually going to do is take it loose from the block itself. Um, that's going to allow me to slide this thing out of this transmission without having to lift on it so much because there's really not a lot of lifting room <clears throat> so that's going to be our next thing right now like I said I'm going to label all these and uh, bag them up so they don't fall out there and get mixed up okay so we've just bagged all of our transmission bolts there was uh, nine of those all together it's not including the three that bolts your starter on 
and we just numbered those and numbered them as to where they went so now we're just going to get to work on getting the bolts uh, from our our motor mounts and uh, we'll be hooking uh, a chain from this lift point to that lift point back there we'll just be going kind of across through there nice and snug and that's how we're going to lift this out of here okay and like i was talking about i'm removing the bolts directly from the block here it's going to give me more room to slide without having to lift this thing up <clears throat> and uh, i'm able to get to three of these bolts you can see here just using a little short socket a ratchet a little cheater bar and i'm able to get to these first three right here without having to do i just moved the power steering pump i just laid it up here out of the way cleared up that room now i've also stuck a two before right under here and it's nice and snug under that oil pan so should this thing try to move um, while I'm doing this it's not going to go anywhere I could go ahead and hook my lift up but then it's going to be right in my way trying to do this so um, right now I'm just going to, to use some blocks to keep it from moving and once I get a little bit farther I'll go ahead and get the chain and get my lift hooked up to it so it's not trying to move anywhere uh, the only other thing I've got um, like three more bolts in that AC compressor that I know of that are going to have to come out and um, there's also some <clears throat> transmission lines that are really hard to get at that are connected to the engine but I'm going to lift this up just a little bit before I go to try and remove some of that stuff it's got just enough slack that I can I can lift this some and I'm gonna get it after I lift it up but right now like I said I'm just getting these bolts on this side now the one that's in the back on the bottom I will have to actually come from underneath to get that one but that's no big deal and then once I get these we'll move over to this side over here and uh, see what we can do from this side and I may have to get at all these from underneath or something I really don't know as of yet I'm just kind of playing this by ear okay we're over here on the passenger side we're working on these mounts over here and I'm going to show you this is the block warmer yeah, it's got a nut on here and we can just uh, unscrew that while we're at it because this is going to have to be disconnected and once you get this unscrewed it'll just pull out of there it's got a connector like that just set that aside but um so i'm right up here working on these mounts going into the block you can see how i've got my ratchet position there and i'm just taking these two right here loose and something else that i noticed while i was down here yeah, actually an access hole right here for uh, that air compressor bolt. And I'll be able to get to that. And also, looks like I'll be able to get to this one up here. I don't know if you can see this one um, right in there I think I can get that from down here I'm just going to use my pneumatic and try to get to those two there and with those out that'll just leave one that's going to be left I do believe so I didn't even notice that before but I'm going to get that bolt and get that one up there and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do about the last one and um Another thing I was going to say, because of this um, compressor being here, I believe it's going to have to come out of the way before I can get to these um, these motor mount uh, bolts that are up in the front of this. I don't think I'm going to be able to get to them without removing that AC compressor. So that's another main reason I was looking at that. 
So I'll follow up here shortly. I'm just going to go ahead and get these two out. Okay, so as it turned out, I could not access through that hole I was showing you to get to. It didn't line up. <clears throat> but what I did was I was able to get the other front bolt. There's two 10 millimeters going in the front of this compressor. There and there. So I come up here. I took these lines. I got a bracket going to the transmission lines. I took that bracket off. There's three bolts holding that just to give me a little bit more room so it wasn't in my way. And I got a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench. And there in the back is a 13 millimeter right back there. You can see. And I guess that's all it's holding this on. There's the 13 millimeter in the rear and then the two tens up in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and finish removing this. And I believe with this loose, I should be able to. Um, get to my other front two motor mount bolts that are going into the block okay so with that difficult 13 millimeter out of the way we're able to take that compressor and set it right up there completely out of our way now and you can see now I can get in here and actually do something I can get that wire there and uh, I can get those front two bolts there no problem and that's the only thing that's left um, holding this engine. So, uh, so I've got a few wires here that's got a connector. I'm just going to cut that tape right there. That's going over to the starter. And get these two bolts right here. So like I said, i got a board under here. So it's not going anywhere but I'm gonna go ahead and get a chain rigged up up top and uh, get ready to to get my lift over here because I do believe we've got enough there may be another wire or something I'm forgetting but uh, there's a ground wire right up here see I got numbered 15 make sure to disconnect that so you don't break it, it runs right down through here don't forget how you, how it routes in behind all that as well. Okay, and I've just got my chain hooked up here to set across those two points. Um, I got it pretty snug, so I'm just going to be hooking on to that. And I'm getting ready to hook to it now. <clears throat> and I've left just two bolts in on the mounts and I'm going to get my lift up here before I take those out. Okay. Alright, so I've been uh, working on getting this up out of here and I've been using a couple putty knives and a pry bar to kind of spread this transmission away from the engine and uh, like I said it I just kind of tapped it a little bit enough to get it started and I'm using these just to keep from damaging the transmission case or anything so in other words I'm prying against the surface of these putty knives and not the, the engine or the transmission and I've got it spread a pretty good ways got my uh, safety stands there holding the transmission and so that's the only said it's um Mainly, it's got to, not only it's got to um, come out of the transmission, but it has to slide up over those studs that are on the, the flywheel. So it's giving me a little bit of difficulty coming out of there. Now, I'm hoping that um, the whole torque converter is not going to hang up on there, which I have had that happen, even though all the nuts were off the studs would hang on the torque converter and it'd pull the whole torque converter out anyways and then I'm going to have a big mess but um, I'm replacing the torque converter seal anyway so it's not going to matter a whole lot but anyways this is about all we're going to get done I think for today um, I'm just going to think I'm going to work on getting the rest of this loose 
Okay, and just to show you how I'm coming up out of here, we got the, so we just unbolted those mounts directly from the block. <clears throat> and same way over here, coming up out of there. And we've got to clear, you can see the oil pan back there. We've got to get clear of that cross member right there. And we're gonna also be double checking and making sure we've got everything. I think those power um, transmission lines are still attached right there. I'm gonna double check those. Okay, so yeah, there's a couple things I missed right here. Um, that's where your transmission lines have a bracket right there that attach to 10 millimeter and my transmission dipstick. So, like I said, um, at this point, take your time and double check everything because you can always miss something and you don't want to be breaking something and having to replace something else okay I ran into another snag the motor mounts were in the way and they were hitting on the oil pan area there and weren't allowing me to slide this engine up far enough to clear this back here so now that I've got those completely out of the way on both sides I can slide this up and move it where I need to. So um, those were 13 sixteenths. These right up at the top up here, you have to get to with a ratchet by hand. The other ones you can pretty much get with a pneumatic, a swivel. And th these over here with the pneumatic on this side, no problem. <clears throat> so, um, you know, like I said, those, um, I couldn't have just took them out because I wouldn't have been able to to uh, uh, slide the engine like I needed to and I had to lift the engine in order to get them out so you know they had to pretty much come out in this order anyway but there you have that and so we're working it up and out of here and I'm gonna try to get it set off over here okay and here we are working it out and you see about how far I've had to lift it here. It's not too bad, <clears throat> just mainly to get this oil pan to clear and stuff. And I'm gonna have to twist it a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can squeeze it on out of here. Okay, so we've got it out of there, and here's a view of what it looks like with it out of here. I said once I got these mounts out of the way, that did the trick, and I had plenty of room just to work it up and out. <clears throat> so not too bad, not too bad. So surprisingly, the bolts, getting the bolts out of the, uh, the transmission are not that bad. So I got all those from the back side with my pneumatic. So it's really not too bad. And besides for this thing being clamped down at the bottom of the oil pan around there on the engine, that was the only thing that was really critical. This thing just kind of pulls up and out of there, so even if you forget to detach it, it ain't really gonna hurt nothing. But anyways, that's uh, all we're gonna do. I just got to set over here, covered up for now. And like I said, I'm gonna be swapping some stuff over so this engine, uh, just like the valve covers and the oil pan stuff that's in better shape, like this valve cover got damaged. And so I'm gonna be swapping a few things over. The tensioner looked like it was kinda, kinda boogered up a little bit, so I'm gonna use my tensioner off the other one. But anyways, I'll just follow up when I start getting a little further along.